I'm here this morning to tell you a little bit about um, the growth of, of Rovia as a company, how we got to where we are, and uh, our outlook on Asia, as well as a little bit on our animation strategy going forward. But uh, as this is an audiovisual uh, market and the Year of the Dragon is still uh, going on, I think we could start with a video. Please. Thank you. But uh, what is this company actually that has these red hoodies and makes all these videos? Um, well, a few words on, on Rovia Entertainment in general. The company was founded in 2003 as a mobile games uh, developer and has grown from the roughly one dozen people of uh, December 2009 when the Angry Birds Classic game came out to the around 500 people that we are today globally. And um, the game has been, um, and all of our, all of our titles uh, since then have been phenomenally successful. We crossed the 1 billion downloads mark in, in May uh, this year, which was a huge milestone for us. We are averaging 200, uh, 200 million monthly active users at this, at this point, and uh, our YouTube channel has racked in 850 million uh, views in total. And after witnessing uh, this sort of success, uh, some journalists have coined the phrase of mobile blockbuster, and we've been very happy to, to repeat that uh, success again with Angry Birds Star Wars, which was our latest release last month, which uh, went to the number one spot in, in the US uh, in just two and a half hours. Uh, very, very exciting stuff. But of course, this didn't come together overnight. Um, as I said, the company was founded already 2003 and had made uh, 51 games before Angry Birds Classic came out. 
And uh, with all that experience, um, you know, there, there was a lot of, uh, a, a lot of things learned, uh, past mistakes and also past successes that went into uh, developing the, the Angry Birds classic game. And uh, with, the, with that success, actually, uh, we were able to then uh, re refocus and uh, and uh, turn the turn the company into what it is uh, today, which uh, which is a proper entertainment business with adding uh, new units for animation, uh, publishing, consumer products, and uh, and location-based entertainment. And last year we did. Uh, a bit over 100 million uh, USD in revenue, and uh, we had a split of roughly uh, 70 to 30 percent between between games and our physical products. And if you think about the uh, strategy of the company from our point of view, the games are still the centerpiece. Some companies uh, go go about uh, introducing IPs through television or through uh, film, and uh, we basically use the same model, but just from a different angle, we, we go in through games and then uh, diversify from there. And this has been a very successful model for us, uh, especially uh, here in Asia. And uh, this is a very nice picture of uh, Shanghai in, in September. The company, uh, the um, City was a bit, a uh, bit greener than usual. Then it was for the celebration of our Bad Piggies game launch, and just goes to show you what uh, what you can do with with great great partners. Uh, also, an interesting thing uh, to look at is uh, our success in South Korea. Uh, smartphone penetration uh, is is 95 percent, but uh, of of that. Um, of that amount of smartphones, you actually have uh, over 100% uh, of, of coverage for Angry Birds titles. So a big, big thank you also to our South Korean fans at this point. Very interesting thing is also to note that uh, China is actually uh, nowadays our largest market by the number of users, and it's an extremely important part of our growth strategy. In, uh, in Asia and worldwide. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, one, uh, one approach that we are actually taking is uh, that we want to adopt Chinese uh, history and Chinese culture and, uh, and bring it to the world through our uh, games, through our um, merchandise, uh, animation, and, and our location-based entertainment. Uh, one of the uh, one, uh, one example of a high-profile uh, high uh, cooperation case that we did was uh, the campaign with Coca-Cola China uh, that we worked with them uh, this, this summer. And it was a good example of what you can get when uh, all of the different business units from, from Rovio work together. And um, let's have a look at the contribution from the animation studio to that campaign. Please roll video. For the for the numbers 
and uh, company background part, but what is Rovio then actually about? Well, uh, the company is about evoking emotions and um, any entertainment actually, any proper entertainment is about getting a, an, an emotional response from your audience. And uh, we're also about not just entertaining, but also about engaging. We're about listening and, and interacting. And uh, we believe in dialogue over, over monologue in, uh, in interaction. And uh, we want to provide all sorts of, um, of inspiration and different channels and tools for our fans to really fire up their creativity and then feed that back to us and for us to be able to come up with more uh, meaningful and, and exciting products uh, for, our, for our fans. And uh, the key is, uh, of course, to connect with, with your audience on a, on a continuous, um, in, in a continuous way because that's the only way that you can really turn them into fans. And um, this is a lady I met in, in Shanghai last year. She was, came up to me and, and probably showed me her screen of, of full three stars on every level uh, of, of one of our games. And uh, it's really humbling every time that uh, people, people come up to me and, and, and you know, thank me for, for some of our products because it's, it's amazing to see how deeply um, people care about the games and, and about our characters, so thanks to any, any players out there who are, who are attending. Um, but really the, the fans are the focus uh, of our company. We would be nothing without them. And uh, keeping them committed to our characters and to our brand is, is the most important task that we have. And in order to reach that goal, we uh, need to keep our content fresh we need to update um, and, and deliver through all sorts of uh, different channels. That's why we have not just the games, but, but also the uh, different physical products. Uh, we have the animation uh, shorts. We have uh, books and comics and, and everything. And we uh, see our business more as a service, as being more about uh, services than products. So for example, the games, you buy them once, but then uh, you can continuously get, uh, get free updates to them. So that is uh, how we want to look at, uh, at our products. And uh, of course, you know, that all comes back to working towards uh, high, high retention and, and engagement in, in everything that we do. The uh, games themselves are um, also a key channel of communication to the fans because in the game pause screens uh, we can basically deliver uh, any messages uh, that we like to, to our fans and it's a very strong uh, cross-promotional platform for us uh, between, between our different products as well. And the games, of course, uh, they are there to create a forward-leaning and, and engaging experience. And um, that is uh, very powerful because, you know, you, you, have the, you have the game close in front of you and, and you're interacting with the characters so, um, so constantly that that really creates a very different uh, feel for the fans. And uh, the characters themselves, then are, of course, what sets apart the game from other games. Uh, there is a lot of uh, refinement uh, being done with the, with the game mechanics and so on, but, but you know, without having characters that fans can really connect with, uh, it, would, it would be just uh, another physics puzzler. And well, the question then is how do you create uh, a deeper connection to uh, to the, uh, between the fans and, and your characters. Well, um, I'd say that one of the, one of the ways to do it is, uh, is through uh, producing more engaging storylines, and, and we uh, do that with, with our animation. And the animation uh, productions have been a part of the Angry Birds success story from the very beginning. The Angry Birds cinematic trailer came out just a couple of months after the release of the first game and um, already you know racked up a huge number of views back in spring 2010 um, we had 
I think a while ago we crossed uh, 80 million views on YouTube for, for this one video. But, but already then, you know, the signs were evident that people really liked the short and it, uh, it was the, the first uh, cinematic trailer for mobile, uh, for a mobile game back then. Uh, of course, after that success, uh, a couple of more shorts were uh, produced and because the fan interest was uh, so, uh, showing, showing no uh, signs of diminishing, uh, it was pretty obvious that there's actually a business case for us here. And the proper steps were then taken. Uh, Rovio acquired the animation studio that was responsible for, uh, for the first shorts, uh, which, is, uh, which was called Studio Combo from, from downtown Helsinki. And uh, with those 18 people, we then uh, set out to build something that has now turned into a full-fledged animation studio of 70, uh, over 70 people. Uh, we are the uh, biggest animation studio in uh, Scandinavia and among the big ones in Europe. And uh, that, uh, that has happened in just the last one and a half years. Well, uh, you can ask a question of why do you want to go through all of that trouble of, of having uh, in-house production? Well, for us, actually, the main goal is um, not production in, in and of itself, but really keeping control of stories and of, of the design process. And uh, we, um, as a company, we don't have anything else than these characters and a lot of talented people, so it's, it's up to us to really take, care, uh, take good care of both, both of them. And uh, of course, you can always sell uh, a license to your, to your IP uh, to, to another producer, but we view it as uh, you know, the imperative for um, maintaining the brand integrity is to have total control of, of stories and, and design. And that said, of course, we do work with external teams for scalability. Um, most of the uh, things we do, we, st uh, we still do in-house, but um, uh, when, we, when we work with external teams, the focus is um, always that we retain design and, 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 and story uh, creative tasks with us. And uh, we've had the pleasure of working with a couple of Asian teams uh, in the past as well. Uh, there's a lot of talent out here that uh, we've only began to tap and we're looking forward to cooperating uh, more in the future. And a good example of, uh, of, of those skills uh, was the Angry Birds Star Wars cinematic trailer that uh, we worked with a South Korean studio uh, to, to bring to our fans. And uh, let's have a look at uh, how that turned out. Please roll video. Oh, oh. oh. 
Um, but one thing I also wanted to mention um, here at a uh, conference called the TV Forum is our take on um, animated content that is, uh, is a bit different from that of uh, a lot of companies that are focused, for example, on uh, producing uh, TV series, which is that, you know, even after the rise of uh, I, uh, the number of uh, various speciality TV channels, still on, uh, on TV, uh, the, your, your competition is still reasonably uh, or relatively limited. But then when you look at, you know, our fans who live in an online world, there's exponentially more uh, competition out there. And uh, that, you know, you're just looking at the hours and hours of YouTube content uh, that's uploaded there uh, all the time. You, you look at uh, all the possible, you know, SVOD uh, options. You have, you even have the games in the same device. You know, there's there's so much more uh, competing on on that same screen, on for for the same screen time. And um, in order to make our content pop out from there, we and and you know really make it rewatchable and and uh, standing the test of time, we really have to focus on quality in, in everything that we do, whether it's the games or, uh, in this case, the animation. And internally, we actually don't refer to our projects as, as videos or virals, but, but really as you know, good old short films, because that has to be the kind of mindset that, that goes into crafting each one of, of these shorts. And um, you know the the entertainment industry in general used to be about uh, scarcity and about uh, limited uh, distribution, controlling that that distribution. But nowadays it's it's all about you know communicating uh, with fans and being being present on all platforms, constantly being in contact with your fans and and, and updating all of the all of the offerings that you have out there. So. We believe that that uh, it's uh, whether it's uh, a, a single you know short film or uh, or the series. We need to be where our fans are because you know the it doesn't make any sense for us to sit on top of a mountain and let them come to us. We we need to be available for them, and uh, really we want to be present on on all possible screens, whether it's uh, you know smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, online everywhere and that is our goal uh, to build our our own uh, network of different content outlets and uh, that has also been one of the goals that uh, me and my colleagues have been pursuing here at the at the Asia TV forum and uh, we've been talking to a lot of uh, interested broadcaster partners here and uh, we're always happy to uh, talk with anyone who wants to think big with us and uh, it's been a it's been a really great pleasure to be be at this event, and uh, basically this wraps up my presentation part. Let's watch one more video for fun and then have some Q and A. Please roll video. <laughs> there was a possibility for submitting questions and uh, also there's going to be the possibility of of taking some from the floor okay there's the first one uh, strategy to expand your user base in other parts of Asia for example India um, well as just outlined we're uh, definitely uh, looking at being on all screens in all territories uh, so one of the things we're looking at is, uh, is the opportunity for, for broadcast partnerships. Uh, the other ways are, are then, of course, to build our online offerings into even more accessible and, uh, and easy, easy to access ways. 
With a huge fan base all over the world, would Rovio like to exploit the IP of Angry Birds to a full feature-length animated movie by co-producing with any animated companies in the Asia region? Well, definitely the feature film uh, has been uh, talked about uh, every now and then. We are still in the development phase on that, and um, we'll be uh, up updating uh, on, on our progress in due time. Uh, for now, if uh, you want to talk about more specifics, I'm always uh, at, your exp uh, at your disposal, so please come and talk to me if, uh, if you think that you're also thinking big like we do. All right? If that's all, then I thank you all for coming.